we've been dealing with uh, inline CSS, which is style equals. Then we've been dealing with embedded CSS, which is anything inside of a style block in the head section of the document. Now we'll deal with the third one, which is external CSS. This requires two things. One is the file, such as mystyle.css. It requires a file saved as its own .css file, number one. Second thing, it requires then a link from this document to that document. So either or, we need to do both of those, one or the other, doesn't matter what order, but let's do it in this order. Let's go up to the File menu, New, we're going to create a brand new file, File Save As, Another part of this trick for it to work is we should save this file in the same place as we're saving our HTML file to link to it the easiest way. So I'm going to call the file my styles save as type is all right, there, cascade, they spell it wrong, cascading style sheets. You should see the save as type cascade, cascading style sheets dot CSS. So I'm saving uh, my styles dot CSS in the same folder as my current project. If you're saving this over in my documents, and you're saving your HTML file on the desktop, this will not work. The path that we're going to write to the document will not work. So make sure you're saving the HTML resume file and the CSS style file in the same folder. So we're going to save that. So Notepad, when I started Notepad, it had this change log file. I, I never closed it, but you can close that tab. We've got the resume tab, and we've got the my style tab. So we've got different documents we can we can tab around in. Um, if you haven't done it, I'm going to close that change log file if it gets in your way. I'm going to close it. But I've got resume and I've got my style. So I've got two documents that I can work with. We can see our code side by side. I can look at the HTML code next to my CSS code if I want this way. If you right click the tab of the CSS file and at the bottom select move to other view, this will just open a simple side-by-side -side view of whatever files you have. So my HTML on the left and my CSS on the right. If you want to move it back to the way it was, you right-click the style file again, and then move to other view again. We've only got two columns, really. We can't get that complex into three <coughs> columns. Some code editors let you do that because you're often working with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So you can see all three of those files at the same time. But here it's just two. And usually I'll just keep it in one view because when I show you here, I can only show you one thing at a time when I zoom in. But it might be useful for you in two views like this. Okay, so in this file, all that I write in this file are only CSS selectors, tags, IDs, or classes. That's it. I don't write anything else. I can write comments. So I can give myself a comment at the very top. Also, the color coding will be a little different, a little nicer. My CSS file. CSS style file. So notice the code, uh, the comment code in the HTML for styles did not turn green, but when it's in its own file, it recognizes it better and it becomes green. And let's say what I want to do is this really cool trick: image. You'll also you're also going to see the codes and the tags be color coded in different fonts a little better when they're in their own file angle brackets. This is one we haven't looked at yet. This is another CSS3 trick. This is to give ourselves rounded corners. In the old days, if I wanted to make a graphic with rounded corners, I'd have to open Photoshop and change it and then upload it and all of that. With CSS, one line of code, and it's round, which is border 
dash radius colon space 25px semicolon. So I'm saying any image make it 25 pixels rounded corners. We'll see how it looks like exactly in a moment. If I were to write a tag, uh, my image curly braces, uh, this, you don't really have to write this, I'm just writing something to show you. And if it's a, an ID, my other image, just showing you when uh, your CSS is in its own file, you get the color coding. You get the, the delineation of a civilized code editor about what you're looking at. So all your tags will look like this. When you've got 100 lines of CSS, you can easily see your tags. When you've got your classes, they look like that, and your IDs look like that. When we were in the HTML file, they're all, they're all black and white text, unfortunately. I wish they would color code it nicely like that, but you see it like that here. So for my own edification, comments, tag, class, ID. Don't be afraid of comments. Make yourself little notes. I usually forget to mention them in class. Uh, but when I write my own apps and such, I comment it out. I, I make comments for my notes for myself or other people on the team. I may put down my code today and work on it next week, and I forgot, what did this code do again? Well, if I left myself comments, I could help myself. And as a beginner, it might be useful to make comments in HTML or CSS or JavaScript that explains what the code does, as you understand it. Okay, cool. So this means I'm going to get a cool rounded corner images in my file. Well, we need to link this file, this CSS file, to the HTML file or any HTML file that wants to use these rules, these selectors. So make sure you've, uh, you've made your edits to the CSS file and saved the CSS file. We've got two things to work with now, don't we? HTML file, CSS file. You might want to get used to using the Save All button. That way it'll save all your open files. Um, whatever you're working on, save your files, or you won't see the results when running. And um, if we were to run it at this point, don't do this, but it would run your code, and your CSS code, and we get nothing. So we need to run the HTML file. But before that, we need to link the CSS file to the HTML file. Um, it does matter to various degrees the order of our code. This will make more sense as we do it, but basically the first code runs first, the last code runs last. Therefore the last thing applies last. Um, so we can either link to our CSS file before our embedded or after our embedded. Um, let's see, maybe we'll compare both, but let's add it after our embedded. So line 22, we need to add the link tag, which is a single self-contained tag. It has no pair. And when a tag has no pair, what does it usually have? Attributes. So we need an attribute for link. We need the rel attribute. We're saying, what's the relationship of the file we're going to link to to this file? The relationship is that this is a style sheet. We're about to link to a style sheet. The relationship of what we're about to link to is a style sheet. This is HTML, this is a style sheet. And lastly, we need to say, well, what style sheet file? Another attribute, href, like a regular a tab or a tag href attribute. We use it here as well, hypertext reference. This is a link over to our CSS file, which we called mystyles.css. If you called yourself, you were something else, 
type that here. I called my CSS file, my styles, plural, .css. If you call yours my CSS, .css, you're going to need to reference it here, my CSS, .css. So link tag, rel attribute, href attribute, save it, and run the HTML file. rounded image. We wrote that in the CSS file. Our HTML file interpreted the code from top to bottom, got here, stopped, went over to the CSS file, loaded all of that into memory basically, came back here, and then started to apply it, and then we get the result there in the web browser. Yes. We have more than one picture, will it apply to all the pictures? Yes, as we've been seeing before, the h2 tag was applied to every h2. The p tag was applied to every p. Because we've got the plain old image tag, it applies to every image it finds. So that's why we can also write classes and IDs to specify specific pictures in our document. How do you do that one? Like, let's say, for example, see we're, about, to we're about to do that. So here we've applied an image styling to all of our images. Um, we've only got one image, but let's say I want to put this image twice in my document. I'm going to copy this image from this section and also put it down in the footer. So if you go back to your HTML file, line 37 has a link to the picture. Copy line 37. And I'm going to go all the way down to the footer. And before the end of footer, I'll paste the same code. So after my copyright text, it doesn't make sense here, but I'll just put it image tag in the footer section. We have now two copies of the picture in the HTML file and they both get the roundness. So there's my picture in footer, there's my picture in header. If I go back to my CSS file and put this like 50 pixels round, both of those will change. So I put a little bit of roundness, 5 pixels. They both got on the four corners 5 pixels of roundness. I can do percent here as well. One hundred percent round looks more like an oval to me, but um, the point here is again, as we've been seeing over and over, depending how we write our code in here, because we use the plain old tag, every image changes. If we want to specify specific elements, we have many ways to do it. We have classes and IDs, or a new way I'll also mention here. We can have, we can do this many ways depending on the complexity. So, um, let me show you one way first right here. Um, I wrote my image and my other image. These aren't the best names. Um, these names of these classes or IDs that we invent Hopefully we invent them with some meaning that if I want to look at this file a month later, this makes more sense than my other image. Perhaps I should name these things more meaningfully about what they look like and such. But for a basic project like this, that's okay. Let's say what I want to do is that some images, I want them to be 100% round, and other images, um, I want them to be only a little bit round. Dash radius five 
percent. So by default, all images will be 100 percent. Some images will be 5 percent. Wherever we attach this class, that particular image will be 5 percent. So in our HTML code, the second image down on the footer, we have the attribute source, the attribute width, and now the attribute class, my image, save it and run it, but remember, run your HTML file, not your CSS file. And now one image is different from the others because it has a class that overrides the global image tag. This also takes precedence, more precedence than, than the tag, than the general global tag. This one is also more specific. It wouldn't matter the order of our code here, I believe, because it's more specific being taken over by the class. So only 5% little roundness, and the top here 100% lots of roundness. We've only got one picture to work with, but let me copy that same picture one more time, and we'll also add it to the end of that previous section, but take away the class. Just make it a plain old image. So I'm copying the same picture to the previous section, but with no class. That koala is classless. Koala has no class. He doesn't close his mouth when he eats his bamboo. So, um, okay. There's another instance of the picture, and it's 100% round. Because any picture, any uh, element of the image tag will obey that CSS. And uh, we've seen that we can say that image has a different, has a different uh, roundness to say that this image has a different roundness and a drop shadow. We can write more CSS. Let's say border radius 25px semicolon box shadow even though it's round it still needs the X, Y shadow and color, so 5, 5, 5, black. And I could easily then go back to that particular image and set the attribute ID equals my other image. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to touch on the tip of the iceberg about how complex CSS could be and what we're going to need to deal with later. Right now we're still pretty basic. Tags, IDs, classes. Uh, I'm going to show you here that we can be even more complex, but it needs a little setup. So what I'll do is uh, that line that we wrote, copy it and paste it uh, completely like that, and the comment will be complex CSS. I think what we're about to do has a specific name that I'm blanking on at the moment, but um, this is, this is going to be more complex. It's, um, it's going to be like this. We had a tag, class, ID. And we saw that if we apply a class or an ID to a specific element, it'll obey us. 
but sometimes for whatever reason we can't apply a class or an ID, but we have to work with, with what exists. This often is a very common thing when we deal with pre-existing frameworks, let's say WordPress, or pre-existing themes, um, that I, I cannot edit the original HTML, but I can edit CSS. So if I cannot edit HTML, that means I cannot go in here and, and do ID equals my other image. But I can still write CSS to target this specific image. I have the image tag, which will apply to every image anywhere. But technically, this image is inside a section. That might be specific enough. Um, because the previous image that I've got at the top this image is inside of header. So technically they're different. There's an image in a header. I can specify that. And over here, there's an image inside of a section. That's different. And down here, there's an image inside of a footer. That's a differentiator as well. So if I want to specify, if I want to select this image in this section, I can write some CSS code that, that says that, which would be section space image. I'm saying this element in this element, this tag in this tag, and it could be a class inside of a class. It could be an ID inside of a tag. It could be uh, an ID inside of a class inside of a tag. I can mix and match and get very complex. But here I'm saying there's some element in my design called section, and inside of section you will find an image. That image make it 25px with a drop shadow. Now there is a space there, it might not be too visible, but there is a space there. Very important. And when I save it and run it, remember run your HTML, if you run your CSS you get CSS. Run your HTML. That one image in that section gets the roundness and the drop shadow. Another way to specify. Again, this is why CSS is level 2 complexity. It's much more of these puzzle pieces that exist, and um, oftentimes when we work with frameworks, for example, jQuery Mobile, Ionic, uh, Onsen, etc., etc., all of these sort of prepackaged starting points. We, we often have to be specific like this. We can't simply create a class or an ID to do what we need to do because the framework already exists that we have to work with. And so this will be much more useful later, but I'm just showing you here. Here's how we can get even more complex. And if you've had experience in the feud class and such, we have the wild cards and the child nodes and parent nodes and all of this complexity. But for the moment, that's okay here. We specified one element in another element. We've specified the image element in the section element, which that is all part of the body element, which is all part of the uh, HTML element. Did you ever think about can we write HTML CSS? Yeah, we can put the HTML tag in here and play with that. That's the parent element of everything else. And its things will trickle down to everything else until we specify otherwise. So every HTML tag can be edited and we can invent our own classes and IDs. And then we can make this sort of path to get to specific elements. And that's why CSS is second hardest. So uh, maybe to write ourselves some better comments here. Complex CSS. Target the image tag inside of the section tag.
that's the result. There's still, of course, more complexity that we can talk about, but I think um, this is a pretty good amount for day two, crash course of CSS. What we started with was this at the beginning of the day. Well, even more basic than that. And then now we've got this masterpiece. All these colors and designs and drop shadows and everything, but the thing is that we started with our content layer plain old HTML, and then via touching the tip of the iceberg of CSS, drop shadows, um, colors, roundness, we didn't even touch on font sizes, um, but uh, we were able to do all of that, you know, H1, uh, is it font size? Colon um, to um, five hundred percent sure. So here we're gonna have a really big H one tag. So there's plenty of these properties that affect just about every element, and just very quick I did. H1 font dash size. CSS has dashes between their, their names of their properties. And then some value, like 500%. So 500% sized font, and it's really big. It's too big, but just to show you, and then we can go backwards 5%. Do you see that? Right there, 5%. <laughs> See, I think I see a V right there. Um, so we can specify so many things. We didn't even get to alignment and columns, all, all of that. But that'd be good for today. Um, this is the second aspect of what we need to learn. JavaScript comes up next, next time. Yeah, one day of uh, these particular items, and we can spend a whole month on HTML, a whole month on CSS, a whole month on JavaScript. But we're taking this sort of overview of all of these concepts. JavaScript is next, and then we'll start to uh, pick up speed after that also. So if you're a beginner, hopefully you're learning a lot. If you're intermediate, hopefully you're still learning a couple things. If you're advanced, just hold on a bit, we'll get there. And um, We'll have some lab time and such. I'll put my code and my notes in the network folder in just a moment. This is what we've got so far. Any general questions? Yes. Exactly. So, exactly. This is not specific enough. So we'd have to do something else. We, we would have to hopefully add a class or an ID, but again, if we can't edit the code, then we get a little bit more tricky to, to specify that. We will be able to specify things via uh, the, the node tree about, is it the first item or the second? Is it the first section or the second section? So we are able to specify that, learning more code. Yes? Ah, uh, that's a good point. So we can do this, which takes over ID or class CSS. CSS ID versus class. So we'll be able to see somewhere here. Off the top of my head, I don't quite remember. Uh, so we'll be able to look it up, and somewhere it'll tell us. It might be um, the order of it. Did you write your class first equals, and then ID second? Did you try switching them around? And it's still... It may be that the ID takes precedence because there's only one there should only be one throughout the document, whereas class can be multiple. Um, which 
which takes precedence. Does not have to do anything with the order that you write in the CSS file? That also, that also has uh, an importance about the order which do you write first in your CSS. Uh, try switching them in your CSS there and uh, um, you okay. should see something. And somewhere here we can see exactly in specificity which which is specific and this can get pretty complex but we'll see various examples online and we'll have the answer here somewhere which inherits it and this article goes on and on and lots and lots of questions because it's a little harder uh, so um, that's it for the moment. I'm going to put my code in there. We'll have a little lab time until 9.30. If you need any help, call me over, and we'll do it again on Tuesday.